Dan, thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Wednesday edition of the South Shores Morning News. Beautiful, sunny February morning. I'm Rob Hackler, and joining me, I believe, remotely, we've got Lisa Zizian. Lisa, are you there? Hi, Rob. Good morning. Okay, I know you wouldn't want to miss our special guest in studio this morning, our former English teacher from Hanover High School. He's also a poet. Mr. John Hopkins is in studio this morning. Hi, Mr. Hopkins. Good morning. Lisa Azizian, so good to see you. Well, see you. I'm sorry. Hear you. That's better. Oh, it is so wonderful to hear your voice today. Thank you. Well, uh, Mr. Hopkins is coming in studio today. He's got a new book. This is a collection of his uh, poems, and uh, it's called Celtic Nan. And uh, we said, wow, as soon as we heard about this mm-hmm. book being available on Amazon, we said we got to get him in here. So it's wonderful to uh, see you. Of course, he uh, taught English for many decades over at uh, Hanover High School, now retired, though. Uh, um, Rob, not, not quite retired anymore. Right now I'm... Uh I'm teaching at an all-girls Catholic school in Milton, Fontbonne Academy, or Fontbonne Early College of Boston, and I've been there for about two years. And uh, listen, I had 34 amazing years at Hanover High School. Oh, yeah. And, um, but for some reason, uh, you know, God has a sense of humor, and next thing you know, I'm at Fontbonne, and it has been just <laughs> amazing there as well. Um, a school filled with great teachers, great students, and... Um, Oh. I love it there. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, well, how lucky is Fontbon? That's amazing. Congratulations. Wow. Yeah. Well, we're lucky to have found each other. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, uh, people are going to love this book. I know it's uh, doing very well on Amazon already, as many people have started to spread the word about mm-hmm. uh, this collection of uh, poems. And I'll I'll start by asking, I guess, uh, John. Um, you know, many people have you know, an idea or someone says, you know, wow, that's a great story. You should write that book. Or, you know, if it's a collection of poems and you have so many poems out that have been, you know, the poems themselves have been published individually in different, um, different places. Um, well, why, you know, how did the book come to be? Well, um, I guess one person asked me, uh, was this a COVID project? You know, you know, a lot of people did a lot of things because, you know, they were homebound and such. And I said, no, you know, I, I've had a lot of poems out there. I've written a lot of poems, and I just thought it might be now is the time to maybe gather them in one place and try to get them out there. And before I go on, I would just like to give a shout out to um, my fellow Benedictine Oblate and also fellow poet David Fry. Uh, he helped me arrange this book and get it out, get it onto Amazon. And without his help, this book wouldn't be possible. But I decided, you know, just to gather up my poems, and as you say, Rob, some of them were published elsewhere, and I put them all in one place, and, um, you know, I'm very happy I did it. And, um, Lisa, I'd just like to know, I, I want to read, I would love to read the um, title poem, Celtic Nam, but do you have any poem uh, you would like me to read? You know, I I marked a couple in the book, Rob, that mm-hmm. I really enjoyed, and but I wanted to ask you to pick one that m- you really wanted to focus on today, because what I love about the book, Mr. Hopkins, is that it weaves a lot of your life through. I mean, we have, you know, you can tell from the title, Celtic Nan, you have some of your history, your ancestry, your family, your uh, relationship um, with with God. You have you talk a little bit about teaching and 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 your kids. So I wanted you to pick what you felt would be I guess most important for mm. us to hear today. Well, okay. Um. Oh, boy. I don't know if I have time to read two. Do I have time to read two poems? I'm going to try to do that, yeah, and I'm going to come in, um, and um, if, you, if you can, too, maybe, uh, Mr. Hopkins, with your right hand, if you can just turn that knob down on that, uh, that uh, black uh, box over there, if you could just uh, turn that down. There we go. Okay, good. Mm-hmm. I want to make sure we don't get any uh, feedback at all as we do the reading here. So, okay. um, yeah, I'm going to let you start. Uh, did you want to start with the, uh, the title poem first? I, w- I would. Okay. All right. We're, this is, uh, again, out of uh, John Hopkins' uh, book, his collection of poems, Celtic Nan. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Um, Celtic Nan 
composed at a Celtic spirituality retreat led by Father Tim Joyce, accompanied by the harpist uh, Maraid Doherty. Nan, on the boat over, you would not eat the worms called spaghetti. You told us that, and we laughed. But quickly quieted we did when your lilting Celtic cadence spoke of leprechauns and banshees and how on one afternoon, shortly after tea, while trying to read the newspaper with a magnifying bar, you were visited by an angel as tall as the oak door that led to a lawn clustered with Patrick's tiny trinities. There we searched the clover for four leaves, not three, for we had learned from you the trinity by heart. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. We also learned from you that dimes were heavenly, and that at around fifty you had seen yourself dead in a dream and went about cleaning, visiting, and saying goodbye for the rest of the year. You told us that, and we laughed, but quickly quieted we did when our mother, your daughter, died. You were seventy-eight and had to lug the laundry of seven to the basement, climb three flights, cook, clean. Yes, we dug for your stories still, but found nothing. No slice of green, no pot of gold, no potato turned black from blight. Oh, but Nana, something howled in the night. And so we flocked to your bed where you said your rosary and read your pilot and told us without saying who we are. Strong Celtic Nan, the beads have come round to this. We have retreated to a thin place to rest and to heal, to pray and to laugh, but quickly quiet we do when we hear fingers bring heaven to a harp, hear a voice bring joy and passion to the people we are. Yes, Nan, to the people you are. Oh, well done. Mm, John beautiful. Hopkins, Celtic Nan. Uh, one of the uh, great poems in this book. And I guess uh, since we're running tight on time, can you find a shorter one? I know, Lisa, you had many picked out. I was trying to look mm -hmm. through and I, I, I just, uh, it's hard for me. I don't want to pick one of the ones because uh, I'm not sure which one you really would love to hear. Okay, um, uh, I've, would I, be? I've got I've got a rather short one here. Okay, um, let's hear that. Well, you know the the last poem of the book is short, and that's about my wife. So I'd like to read that. Oh. I'll get it down. I'll get I'll get through it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> here it is. It's called it's called waiting. <clears throat> There was that day I started feeling restless, so instead of correcting papers or washing dishes or paying bills or doing all those th other things that had to be done, I decided to say a Hail Mary for every person in every photo in every room of the house. Next I prayed for the furniture, specifically those who made it. Your name came up a lot. Then I prayed for the spider suspended from a ceiling corner. I spread out the newspaper and prayed for every person in every story. This took a long time. It was still raining, so I prayed that Hester would forget Dimsdale and be mine, that Tess would forget Angel and be mine, that Anna wouldn't jump. I prayed that Mrs. Ramsey, Mrs. Ramsey, Mrs. Ramsey wouldn't die. I started praying for each raindrop when I heard the car door close. I knew then I could stop for a while, maybe start the dishes, because at least one prayer was about to be answered. <laughs> 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 Mr. John Hopkins, Celtic oh. Nan is the name of the book, a collection of wonderful poems. There's so many uh, good ones here, Lisa. Was there, do you remember, was there one that you really loved? Uh, I know you marked down Dragonfly. Oh. Um, you know, I, I thought one of the ones I, I really liked was uh, I'll Admit Lord. Oh, I yeah. thought that one really just, uh, again, just thinking about the, the rituals and life. And, you know, I think during this, um, you know, everything that we've been going through, it's really, uh, we're appreciative of those who we have in our lives. Just about, you know, looking out. A lot of people have been home, Mr. Hopkins, and they look out the window and maybe they do see what's going on outside that window. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll tell you, one of the things we try to do uh, as uh, Benedictines is we try to see the um, sacred in the mundane, mm. the sacred in the ordinary. Uh, sometimes I think God is hiding in plain sight. He's right there if we could just look and see. Um, so, yeah. Celtic man. 
And I liked the one of your poems that you were outside and you discovered a children's toy. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> Our, in the uh, yard. Yeah, Army Man. Yeah. Yeah. Army Man, that's right. That is a good one. That is a good one. Yeah. Well, we want to invite people. I know, um, and Malcolm, uh, our traffic reporter, be patient there, Malcolm. We're going to go to you in just a moment here. And we just want to say uh, the book is available on Amazon.com, Mr. Mm-hmm. Hopkins. Yes. Uh, we are coming up on St. Patrick's Day. This would be a wonderful gift. That's a good idea. Yes. Yeah. A great collection of poems, Celtic Nan. It's available on Amazon, right? We can go to Amazon.com. Do we just type in this? Celtic Nan, John Hopkins. Uh, If you are a uh, former Hanover High School student, you'll recognize there are a lot of vocabulary words in this book as well that you'll (laughs) recognize. I noticed. Pusillanimous. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Hopkins, will you promise to do a reading this summer that we can attend? Absolutely, Lisa. And listen, Rob and Lisa, thank you so much for having me on. This has really meant a lot. Oh, wonderful to have you in there. That's Mr. John Hopkins, Celtic Nan.